for your consideration of Awesome Games Done Quick 2023, I present my commentary of Jackie Chan Adventures Hard Mode Speedrun. The Jackie Chan Adventures Speedrun is a speedrun that is particularly challenging and can have many different areas for which the game can be very quickly turned into a bit of a slog, so there's a lot of balance between what mode you pick and how quickly you can make it through. In the case of Jackie Chan Adventures difficulties, we could turn that in itself into a voting incentive, a donation incentive in the form of a vote where the category with the highest amount of donations will be chosen for the marathon. So the donators could decide to make life very difficult for me and pick hard mode where it's much easier to get caught in stun lock, enemies take more hits, the most hits out of any difficulty, and I'll get into specifics a little bit later, and then in medium mode, it's a nice balance between easy and hard. And maybe perhaps the donators want me to have a really breezy, nice little marathon. So, in that case, I'd end up picking something like, say, easy mode, where I can get through it pretty quickly. These may or may not change the amount of estimate time that might be needed, because quite a bit can go wrong in this game. Uh, we'll want to make sure to save between every single stage because of that. And it's possible that we could get caught in a super unfortunate stun lock several times where we just lose all our lives and we are forced to continue from the very beginning or something else. So, uh, You may notice thing, I haven't talked much about, about the enemies yet, but you've seen a few different enemies. You've seen some of the general uh, baddies and then we got the big guys. Uh, big guys will take anywhere from four rounds of uh, three hits any kind or five rounds of three hits with these general baddies that you're seeing right now they take three rounds of three hits doesn't matter if it's three punches three kicks or a combination of the two they take that many every time so nine in total and in some rare cases there will be a few that only take eight i'll cover those a little bit later we usually don't have to worry that much about it They will sometimes do it for a certain number of enemies, like the one you just saw right there. As you can see, the method that I have opted to pick for a majority of the enemies in Jackie Chan Adventures is we tend to pick the uh, quick punch method, since it's got the uh, least amount of lag involved in it, as far as I can remember. So now we got uh, what we call gang dudes. Uh, they have these interesting looking bug-eyed glasses on. Uh, they take eight hits in total, a round of two, and two more rounds of three. So there is that much to say. And they don't take too long, but the one thing you have to do is in between each of these specific fights is uh, mash the A and B buttons so you can get through each of the dialogues that will uh, prevent you from moving the game a little bit faster uh, because there's going to be some dialogues for each of the rival gangs in San Francisco and occasional boss fights as well in the next handful of levels. I'm going to uh, close the door so that there's no AC running. It's a little bit quieter so don't mind that. So the, you can see, as I was uh, closing the doors, uh, there are some other enemies known as Yakuza Tufts. Um, Yakuza Tufts, I, I call them Yakuza Tufts. Uh, they're pretty stylish, and they picked um, the coolest colors to wear. Um, they take four rounds of hits. That first round is automatically a given if you can get in one punch, and then there's three more rounds of three. 
Now, you could circumvent those three punches or three kicks or whatever combination you elect to pick by picking them up and throwing them down. As you can see, I do that for certain select number of enemies. If we have, like, one enemy approaching us from one direction and there's, like, three from the other way, we generally pick up one of the enemies and we'll throw them at the other three because it can save us a good amount of time on some of the bigger dudes or even just some of the smaller dudes as well. So as you can see... Uh, big dudes with attitude are back. You'll see quite a few of them. Uh, and unlike these smaller enemies that we have to fight off, we can't pick them up, so we just have to punch them. And a standard stun lock situation is going to get us out of trouble. These uh, gang dudes will always have four rounds of three hits every time. <laughs> so depending on where you place yourself isometrically on the screen in this game which I would categorize as a beat-em-up. Um, you could possibly throw the enemy at um, the sign that you just saw where I was picking up the scroll. Uh, fortunately for us, that did not happen in this run. So as you can see, what I'm doing right now for this very first boss, unfortunately, I did take some damage, so I had to roll back and forth. That's what we do in case the, uh, the other, uh, what I'd call grunts, cause a little bit too much trouble. Uh, but right now, I got into position where my spacing and my uh, my frame spacing was perfect between each of the punches that I was able to just get the boss in a stun lock position to uh, finish off San Francisco pretty quickly. Not the fastest I've ever cleared it, but that was a pretty good demonstration of how to handle the first boss. Uh, the first boss will show up again a little bit later in the game on the Great Wall. So now we are on stage two, as you can see. This is section 13. It's one of our few places where the training can actually lose us a few lives if we get caught in a stun lock here. And we can just generally punch through all these um, uh, punching robots. I don't know, punching bags. I don't really have a name for these. If I looked through the dialogue, I might, but there's a lot of dialogue for this specific area. At the beginning of certain areas, our, um, our agent may have a lot to say towards us as objectives of each of the stages. Um, these guys, if they get you in stun lock, they can cause a lot of damage. As you notice at the end of the first section of section 13, um, we threw a, a piece of, I don't know, leather, rubber, I don't know exactly what it is, but it takes the first two punching bags out and then we throw a chair at the next two to finish that section off. And it's a quick and easy way to uh, get done with those. So yeah, as you can see, just groups of three here can cause a ton of trouble if you uh, just get caught one moment. So We try to get them all three gathered up together. Um, in the case of this area, we actually have to go right directly behind that uh, camera, and that stands true for every other area. That's how we are able to uh, activate each of the fighting scenes. And you might see a few cases where that um, benefit extends a little bit more towards um, avoiding certain uh, fights later on. There's only like maybe one or two known fights that we can skip and I'll get to those later. So yeah, section, section 13 is complete. It's a fairly quick stage unless the um, enemies decide to be uncooperative and they can be. So one thing you have to be super uh, um, aware of, as you might have noticed, in this run you can get caught immediately by the out of bounds area or the bottomless pit. And so we have to uh, be careful as to not get too fast moving uh, from top to bottom of the screen since isometric beat-em-ups like this uh, with endless pits, bottomless pits, leave us in a lot of trouble. So if we can, we'll pick up this, uh, this um, grunt here and we'll throw him at the other baddies. And um, if we can't, we'll just have to do a chain of punches. As you can see, like picking them up is a tough decision and you have to know that you are close enough to one of those bottomless pits to make it worth your time save. Because if you don't, you can lose a lot of time there. Sometimes it's just better to chain punch after punch after punch. 
So there's one of two things that could happen. These guys can be super cooperative, un uncooperative like they are right now, or they can kind of quickly round themselves up for you to, uh, uh, you can see that uh, other uh, big dude with attitude right up there. Uh, unfortunately, uh, he did not cooperate for us. So generally what happens if we kill the first set of enemies low, if we beat up the first set of enemies low, that second one will just run off by himself. So, And this uh, brings us into one of the um, many things that makes this game a little bit tougher to speedrun is enemy patterns can just sometimes be unpredictable. You don't know what you're getting. You can be prepared for one thing and have something completely different happen. It's it's hard to say how it's all going to play out. So, you know, having practice pretty much just comes down to doing runs and just doing a whole lot of runs. So, uh, and that's kind of the beauty of this game. Every run is going to look a lot different from the other one, for the most part, with the exception of a couple of things that can change. So what we're actually doing here is because I there's another option. It's super risky but it loses a lot of time just trying to go for it, is we just kick the enemy off screen every time. And uh, we uh, just position ourselves here um, by defeating the uh, the tough guy um, off screen like that. We can avoid getting hit by the um, those um, booby traps, and, um, and we can move on to our first introduction to these enemies, which I uh, have two different. I, I really the name we can give to them is ninjas. Uh, these are ninjas, uh, also known as sh shadow dudes. Um, what we like to do is either just do punches like this, or and actually getting stun locks on these are a lot easier than other fights. So those series of jumps I did are a little bit harder than um, I made them out to be, just simply because there is a booby trap uh, that shoots arrows out uh, right next to the ledge, and it's the hitboxes there for where you can get across safely without getting hit is what I'd call a suggestion. There's really no good way to gauge for it except to uh, kind of just jump and uh, hope for the best. I've had pretty good luck in more recent runs, but I've had some runs that I've just lost like 10 seconds there just because there's like no good way out. And that's one of the disadvantages of the isometric aspect of this game. So there's one more like rush of, uh, of Yakuza's and gang dudes. And they, this is a perfect example of getting caught in a chain of hits. Uh, no matter if it's um, baddies or shadow dudes, you get caught like this, you're going to lose around 5 to 10 seconds worth of time. Sometimes even more. So now we're done with uh, the Mayan Temple. We're moving on to Bermuda. Bermuda here is pretty straightforward as long as you get good enemy lineups. So what I did there... You notice most of the time when there's like four enemies like that lined up like that, we uh, generally uh, go for what I would quantify as a uh, um, a stun punch where the enemy is briefly invulnerable afterwards where I can just quickly scoop them up and get rid of them, no problem. So what I did is I kind of uh, do my best to manipulate the patterns of the enemies in this fighting phase uh, by rolling back here and then rolling again um, after that. I This was a poor setup. Um, the Shadowmen can sometimes be set themselves up in pretty bad areas, and it's all depend on where they jump, so... You'll see more uh, terrible examples of such later on. Another thing we have to be careful about, especially with the isometric screen and arbitrary like areas where you can just die instantly, is um, sometimes Jackie Chain will just jump when you're trying to pick up the enemy. So we actually try to defer in runs that I do. I pretty much generally just go for uh, punches. Because it's a little bit safer, 
when done perfectly. Uh, I describe it as mostly risk free. Now, there's actually a couple of different sets of hits that the um, ninjas can take uh, in terms of hits. Um, the um, in the easy mode difficulty, uh, green shadow dudes will take three rounds of three hits. Red shadow dudes will take four rounds of three. Blue and yellow will take f five, I believe, in the easy difficulty. Um, actually, it may be four and five. Um, I'm trying to remember. Yeah, that has to be because the um, the yellow or gold ninjas will take the most rounds of hits in every difficulty. In the easy mode, that would be five rounds of three. In medium, I think it's still five, but in hard mode, you get the uh, you get the double whammy of hitting hit with six rounds of three, or just six general rounds. Some of them don't have the same starting, um, so I'm actually doing something really interesting. I'm not sure if it saves much time. Is I just threw a cannonball at him at the uh, big dude a few times. Um, in this run I got fortunate where the big dudes that were being spawned were ones that took a little bit less hits now with this sh uh, shadow dude phase we're actually going to very purposefully just kind of like set up where we'll block a few hits and throw the shadow men um, into the abyss below because it does save us a large amount of time the exception is of course the ones that spawn up here because they just don't really uh their behavior doesn't uh, encourage them to jump down to where your level is. So they generally stay high. Uh, they never go low that often. Though I do get proven wrong every now and then by that. Uh, so this phase actually has a few spawn a little bit further behind. Um, um, it is very easy to get caught in stunlock with the shadow men in that particular position so yeah as you can see sometimes we can get very lucky um and we can actually we can actually oh that was yeah i'm lucky as you can see i was trying to pick up the enemy the, the way you pick up the enemies is by pressing the shoulder buttons and then And then you you are able to um, pick up the enemy that way, and then it's a similar way to let go. So I lost track. Uh, there's a couple of things that I'll discuss later after Bermuda is done that I missed out on. But in the meantime, there's this boss as you can see. Pretty simple patterns. You can only get a maximum of three hits in. So we actually go for kicks. Um, a little bit safer range on those so actually what we do here is that we just roll back and forth and that generally sets us perfectly for each of the kicks uh, it takes a couple of rounds of those uh, what we do is we try to set ourselves up a little bit f further away once the uh, boss uh, jumps it goes for the inhale kind of like Kirby a lot less uh, a lot less adorable though so with Bermuda done, we're moving on to Mount Fuji. I'll address a few things that I did not quite talk about. Uh, the section of enemies beforehand when I was at the um, fourth scroll, or actually just the third scroll in this case, uh, would be um, where sometimes you can save a little bit of time by getting the enemies off the ledge right away. Um, it did not work out for us in this run. But sometimes you can just like by taking care of the uh, shadow dudes first, the um, the grunts will sometimes just throw themselves off the ledge for for no particular reason. They'll the game will sometimes just treat it like well they weren't even there in the first place. There are a few examples of that. It can save us a good uh, ten seconds or so. In the grand scheme of things, that's pretty important. So we try to to make it happen, but other times it just doesn't work. So.
it's really dependent on how your fights uh, go and I guess a couple of other outside factors that are less well controlled. So this train level, I'm making it look particularly easy in spite of a few struggles. Um, I have a, I'll have a little bit less to say as I further uh, commentate the run. Um, mostly because uh, I've gone over most of the enemy fundamentals, but uh, one thing that should not be taken for granted is that these runs have some brutal mechanics, uh, especially these ones. Um, if you're not inside the train, which has its own disadvantages, um, outside the train, you have liberty to grab your enemies, throw them down, jump them at any will. Uh, but the problem is, uh, because of the isometric uh, stage, um, where there is no, there's no protecting you from falling out of bounds, you can lose all those lives really quickly if you're not being careful. So we try to deal with everything from left to right or right to left. We don't try to move from top to bottom in this game. We especially try not to roll all that much, because one miss roll will will get us killed instantly I'll just say that much so you saw the uh, red shadow dudes show up and the blue one too uh, the only way we can tell it's just based on the belt and their collar um, uh, which has the color of course And, um, well, in the case of the Red Shadow Men, they just have varying different, like, stun lock patterns that they can get you stuck in, depending on how many of them are. The ones we're really worried about, though, are the blue and the gold, uh, shadow, uh, dudes. The blue ones are the worst ones to get caught in. Um, with the blue shadow dudes, uh, you can... You can basically get caught in a stun lock so long as they keep on throwing shooting stars and eventually that gets you caught in generally losing lives unless you're extremely quick and you can catch that sort of that very small frame cycle in between where they are unable to uh, to um, catch you in between sometimes but it's so small where you will be just like spamming buttons around and you're you're just unable to move out of it so we'll just um have to find better ways out of it and it may just come down to like what type of consoles we pick you know with jackie chan adventures um the game boy player does move at a slightly slower frame rate than what is possible you know, I think it's like 59.34 versus what could be like a full 60 FPS and or, or the traditional uh, 30. Um, I think it's 60, uh, depending on if we made a switch to another alternative, which you know, I'd have to take some more research in to see if there's anything that could provide those conditions. Because that could change kind of like how we approach this game and but for now i mean the shuriken hits they can feel a lot of control um so that is something we do have to consider now we're inside the train uh there's a couple of fights that we have to do with these fights you can't pick up the enemies otherwise they will just keep on falling down every time and they won't really die at least I haven't investigated. It's not fast enough. We're, we just have a method for dealing with it. And that is just three rounds of punches every time. Going back and forth until it's all taken care of. And sometimes kicks. It's super situational. It's just based on what you're most comfortable with. As you can see, I didn't know if I was going to get caught in a bad fight there. So I actually... Just purposefully um, kicked that time because it has a bit of a higher range and it's a little bit safer. So we're near the end of the train and we actually purposefully will push all our enemies uh, right underneath this uh, door. 
because they will fall down a little bit faster. Oh, hey, minor mistake there. So I was actually trying to just get a set of quick punches. Every now and then I'll miss inputs. You'll see those happen every once in a blue moon. Fortunately, it doesn't happen too often. You can avoid it most of the time. All right, so we're done with that phase. That That's good. That was handled pretty well. There is one thing I'm going to do. Oh, uh, one thing I've noticed is if you grab a healing item by kicking it, you can avoid this um, phase of, uh, um, of grunts by doing that. That seems to be one of the only known ways that I've been able to uh, skip that. And I'm not sure if it's consistent, but I was able to do it in the past three world record attempts that I uh, did for this specific category, which brings us up to our next boss. Um, and this, uh, this boss knows martial arts, or at least we think this boss knows martial arts. It's not, uh, don't, don't call me out on this for sure, but um, uh, much like the previous boss from San Francisco, um, we can stun lock him as well, um, or them, I'm not sure. Oh, hey, yeah, a perfect example of how badly this uh, this fight can go, or how badly this section can go. With the isometrics, when you're trying to focus on carefully pushing yourself towards the scroll, you can sometimes just, bam, roll off. And so I purposely went for a game over, so I'd have three complete uh, lives. And it doesn't actually lose us any time when done effectively. If you do it at the very beginning of the level, and you know you can... Um, it's pretty efficient and it's actually a great way to um, reset the situation so we're on we're down with Mount Fuji that's one of the levels where it can be out of bounds areas can be scary um, can be somewhat with Forbidden City but for the most part there's enough protective fencing where it will probably catch us for the most part but also the setups for each of these fights uh do not really um, require much jumping to worry about, so Mount Fuji is probably one of the scariest early stages. We're getting on to what I would call the traditionally the second half. So, yeah, as you saw, that's our first gold uh, shadow dude. Well, we made a joke out of him. Um, we're going to throw away the mop right away. I mean, it loses a little time, but it also means we don't pick it up later. As you might notice, I'm purposely positioning myself down here. The, the position here allows us to just punch and or pick up the enemies and throw them into the abyss. It's a very quick way to um, turn that fight down from what would normally be around 30 to 40 seconds down to as little as 10. So it's a good, good way to take care of that section. We're about to be moving into the uh, sort of temple area of the Forbidden City. This uh, Forbidden City area, I don't know it's exactly what it's based off of. It could be like a city in China perhaps, because uh, the next level is the Great Wall of China. Um, uh, so inside the temple, we actually have a very efficient setup, is just to hold the enemy, wait a little bit for the other one to spawn, and then throw the two at each other. And then we do it yet again. Especially with these uh, blue shadow dudes, um, we want to get them picked up as quickly as possible. Otherwise, you'll see something like that happen. As you can see, the star hits started activating. We were able to get rid of him relatively quickly, but that won't always be the case with with these next few. It's actually so there. Uh, you got to see the staff uh, that. Um, the gold shadow dude uses um we will sometimes just get caught in a stun lock with the gold ninja as well so we try to be very careful not get caught in those stun locks it can lose us lives and sometimes it can lose us really good world record paces or just good runs in general so there's no really uh fully preparing for all their patterns sometimes they'll just walk around run away from you 
uh, the enemies will just do that sometimes. You can chase them all you want and they will just go out of their way to avoid you for reasons that I don't fully understand, so. I've learned a lot, for, a lot from each of the runs that I was able to complete uh, and run through most of sometimes. You learn that sometimes it's just best to throw your enemies. Other times you just go in for those like easy stun lock punches where they just won't be able to move anywhere. That is not always a guarantee, especially when you have a series of enemies all together in one position. So again, the job here is just go for one kick then get in the punches as always. It's a pretty safe technique to not get yourself caught in a stun lock scenario. So actually with this section here we will purposefully line ourselves up against the back of this wall and then we'll just kind of deal with these uh, red shadow dudes first. That way we don't get like triple teamed. Uh, if we get triple teamed especially with the skull dude as you can see he's giving me trouble right now. Then we can lose a lot of time that way. And that was a method that I just recently came up with. We don't do it every time because sometimes getting trapped behind walls can be really bad. But in that particular case, it's a nice, like, safe method. And it usually just works out okay. Now, in Forbidden City, we're about to get to one of the uh, worst sections of the game. It's the last part, of course. Where sometimes the shadow dudes can be super uncooperative and catch you in stun lock before you even jump down. So we just jump down right away and hope that they all line up, but they didn't. And one of them started throwing some ninja stars. Fortunately, they did jump right into my grasp and you can just stun lock them against the wall like that. Because if you're able to quickly catch them against that uh, wall right there, that section can become a nightmare. And speaking of nightmares, we got our... Uh, got our lovely little boss here uh, it's one of the um, one of the presumed uh, members of the uh, the dark hand organization I don't know I mean it's in the story there's some plot to it as you saw when the cloud passes by the moon uh, the boss loses its powers and you can go in for a series of punches and kicks and as many as possible until the, uh, the moon is clear again so we wait for those dark clouds the way we do it is you just kind of spin back and forth, go for a few punches every now and then, and hope not to get hit too often. And then we just punch like so, because it's pretty fast, and f doing it efficiently without uh, missing any, you can clear through about a bar every single time, a little under. So it takes about four to five phases. This is a pretty lengthy boss fight, but we found... With enough practice, you can get through it a lot quicker every single time. We will see this. Um, we will see this boss again, but in a slightly different form, going into Victoria Harbor, which is a can of worms I'll discuss a little bit later. So actually, fortunately, the way we got knocked over, the boss threw the uh, power ball or whatever beam of energy in the opposite direction that we were located in. Uh, unable to hit us so that's a good thing not always lucky we can get very unlucky with these hits so and it, it it's just a similar uh, bit of misfortune we have to deal with every time when we uh, go through this fight no matter what difficulty we have and I actually have links provided in the commentary track to the other runs below as well including this run without any commentary so I'll have that provided the same case will be for the other sets of submissions that I make each category a select category will have some commentary on at least for every game that I submit that will be four in total as you can see the boss is completed we're done with um, Forbidden City we're moving on to Great Wall I think that one is a pretty cool stage you can lose every now and then on this one but if you play pretty safe, you can get some pretty pretty cool patterns. So, yeah, we're going to be doing that as best as we can. Um, so, with uh, this level, it's mostly just um, finding creative patterns that will um, 
get rid of the enemies as quickly as possible. And some of them are utmost interesting. We sometimes just rotate ourselves back and forth. We'll sometimes spin around. In the case of this stage, I'm actually going to position myself at the very end like so. Where you can just pick up one enemy, throw it at the other two, and you can just throw them into the abyss. Same case with these grunts as well. We're going to do the exact same thing here too. So, And that saves a lot of time. I found that I was able to save up, I think as much as like... 20 seconds there that was something i recently discovered and as i play more through this game i find more creative ways to just like quickly dispose of each of the grunts shadow dudes big dudes with attitude doesn't matter we just find a mix of different methods to uh, uh to deal with them so so now uh you can see shadow dudes are back and with this case, uh, with these little pieces of land, we actually kind of just go back and forth. Uh, unfortunately, we can't do it with this stage, and this is actually a scary part of the stage. Uh, we got immediately out of the gate golden ninjas. That can be tough. And then we get to uh, one, probably one of my funniest nicknames uh, for a another part of the scary uh, section of this uh, level, uh, the legendary birds. Um, for some reason, I decided to nickname them Articuno, um, uh, Zapdos, and Moltres. Uh, no clue why, I just based it off the color. Uh, it's funny to me, at least. So actually, it might seem a bit slower. We're going to just punch this dude out of bounds, and then punch these two um, baddies away like so. And then we just manipulate our patterns for each of the enemies so that we can just get them off the abyss like so. And that does save a fair amount of time. With this Great Wall of China, it's pretty intuitive in that sense. Although these sections here can be tricky. We got some stairs. And they can just decide to be invulnerable or just like out of punching or kicking range. And it can be annoying. That's another thing that can be annoying about the Shadow Dudes. Is you can just have them just crowding you both on both sides. And there's not much you can do about it sometimes. All right, so this one's a little bit wider. What we do try to purposefully handle them one at a time because there'll be more that show up. Sometimes we can get multiple at once, but like they can just sometimes be a dawdle in that sense. All right, so we try not. Ugh, I got kind of lucky there with that uh, handling of that a particular um, grouping of enemies. I did get punched a few times. And once again, sometimes the enemies will just help themselves like so. I was very fortunately able to uh, to get out of that mess like so. All right. So as you can see, I just kind of face back and forth in this particular position. Uh, maybe a little bit closer to the middle would be better next run. So I actually showed off a block because the enemies were particularly uh, uh, particularly uncooperative in that situation. So we have a lot of these just like singular sets of like enemy rushes where it's just best to stay in place for the most part. Especially because in this particular stage, uh, the enemies will just jump off uh, into the forest below sometimes. I've never fully understood why they do it sometimes, but uh, fortunately they uh, make it really easy for you to um, get rid of them quickly. So long as you're on your quick on your toes, so so you can see here I'm gonna lose a life, um, of course. We don't want to try to use too many continues. We do use them strategically at the beginning of the next level usually. Um, in the case of these uh, fights that you're seeing, all of it's emphasized on finding a ledge and just getting them quickly knocked off, so we can take away a few rounds of three hits and. For, unfortunately, we can't really do it here because it's going to lose us more time to let them run over. It takes like a good 20 seconds for them to uh, to transport themselves over to your location next to the ledge. So we just uh, opt to... I think the best method for this section would just be to, to punch them in the background. Unfortunately, with this guy... Um, 
Well, fortunately, he actually fell into the abyss. Okay, I was just trying to... Again, the most difficult part of this game is getting the scroll. Every time. No particular reason for why. It just is. We're going for the chain of punches. This one's a lot harder because sometimes the boss will just not get caught in a stun lock at all. You can just get terribly unlucky. You can just be caught where there's tons and tons of enemies and they just don't care and they play by their own rules and... Um, fortunately for us, we were able to get out of this mess. Um, not as fast as I wanted, but that's okay. Alright, got the scroll. If the enemies stay low, then it's easy to get the stun lock. As you can see. Eventually I was able to pick it up. So again, so you're gonna see me use another strategic life here. This is the second one I used in this particular run. You can see just how much out of bounds there is on Victoria Harbor. This level here is a big run killer, no matter what category you're in. It's bad, it's just bad. You can get flustered and caught in a terrible scenario where you're unable to just deal with the the levels of enemies that are here and in hard mode it can be especially brutal so um again you put your trust that your enemies are going to just fall into places that you're able to just punch them back out of again um and we just uh we want we want to turn all our baddies into a bunch of pro swimmers so we're just gonna kick them into the water now we're in australia i think they'll have a fun swim yeah, they'll be fine we just do that as much as possible, especially for these uh, big dudes that take five sets of hits and other big dudes that take four sets of hits. So yeah, that was a little bit pesky. Uh, these bosses, these uh, fights were a little bit pesky. So actually right there, I purposely picked up the paddle and what that does, it disperses all the enemies, if at all possible. Sometimes you just don't get much dispersal from them and you get caught in stun like like this um but uh fortunately for me not so much the problem um uh most of the time you're able to get pretty good patterns where you can just punch them all off into the ocean uh not always this is where the nightmare begins you have four shadow men sometimes three but they you get caught in them that's when the trouble begins. I threw him in the wrong direction. I don't know why. Oh wait, I know why. This was like a new method that I tried out. Uh, just, I guess like speed strats. You can either throw them, or if you're confident in your ability to run through this game, you can just you can just quickly round them up to the to the um the right side of the boat, where you can you can very quickly uh, what's the word? I'd say you can very quickly. Oh, you can very quickly just punch them away because the way that they jump they're always invulnerable at the end of their jump they don't have anything clever planned out within that jump so um and the reason i call these uh boat sections and nightmarish is because sometimes they will just all round themselves up in one or another direction and they will just um, stun lock you to the end of the days. And it's especially the worst in sections like Victoria Harbor and um, Siberia, where the enemies will just gather up in groups of four. Uh, we will see perfect examples of this coming up um, in the next half of this particular section of uh, uh, Victoria. For now, we're getting some pretty cooperative patterns, aside from a few pesky enemies, but you'll get to see perfect examples later down the line of uh, what can go really wrong. So here's the, the Nightmare Part 2. Uh, what we got here is just, I thought there was a healing item here. Uh, I lost like five seconds there. I probably should have just gone right for it. So yeah, four enemies. If they... You can just sometimes, like, if you go for a scroll attack, and scroll attacks are cool and they're great for high scores, uh, but you um, you can just get caught in stun like this. And it's bad, and it just looks terrible, and yet we all have a bad day, and 
yeah, it's just bad. So that was a terrible example. Um, all the enemies didn't spawn right away. Uh, but uh, very fortunately, they didn't... Okay, they dispersed. And this is the part where you eventually get hit by ninja stars. Oh, okay. Didn't get to show the worst example there. This is can also be pretty bad, too. They, well, they take, like, four sets of hits in hard mode. They can just sometimes beat up on you like nobody's business, and there's not much you can do about it. There's a particular section of this game where I lose a few lives, um, and I'll get to that. And it's something that needs to be addressed because it is a possibility. You can just have your runs loose by this next particular section that we're slowly rounding up on. So you can see, I grabbed a lot of healing items here. These enemies will just clobber you if you're just a far enough distance away, like so. And there's not much I can do about it sometimes. So what I was meaning to do is actually punch them in that direction. Um, sometimes we'll go the other way if we want to play it safe. So that was a great setup there. Don't always we don't always get it that way. That's actually the perfect like punching range because they don't fall onto the next um, I guess dock. Even if they did, we just uh, have to uh, bank on them jumping off. If they don't, well, then we got bigger problems. Most of the time that's not an issue, uh, but it can be. See, that's a perfect example of when they jump off. So, this is probably one of the worst sections of the game. So, I'm going to lose one life there. Um, fortunately, okay. Yeah, as you can see, jumped off the, the dock. Sometimes they'll jump in the opposite direction. But most of the time, they'll just jump right towards you. That does not always happen. This next dock here is where things get scary. So we have the scroll. This next scroll allows us to jump really high. Kind of like, like Metroid. Um, kind of like in Metroid. But uh, you can see there's the edge of that dock right there. That's where the, the um, second to last boss uh, the uh, second to last boss is major like uh, regular level boss is dwelling before we get to the final boss. And it's a revisit from our old friend in the Forbidden City. Um, unfortunately, if you just punch the wrong direction, uh, so the the gimmick with this fight is if you you have to be brave and just go immediately up for a series of punches, and you have to just let the boss play its own terms, try not to get hit by the energy beam. It feels a lot more like an energy beam. So as you can see, you have to get a stun lock and uh, hope you can sustain the stun lock without getting hit by the shadow dude. That's a great example. And the shadow dude just has no clue what it's doing, so it's just gonna sit like that. And uh, with all the proper elements in play, you can get through that boss fight in 10 to 15 seconds. With all the factors in play, of course. So this is another scary level, Siberia. Though it's not so scary at the beginning, so long as you know the proper areas. What gets scary is at the end. That's when things get dicey. So we have a combination of grunts, shadow dudes, and big dudes with attitude. And we just could deal with a combination of all different ones. Um... We're just going to do what we always do and quickly punch them away like so. And um, that should usually assure the, uh, the bear. All right. So with this particular fight, I mean, you could go all the way to the edge of the right side to try to knock them off, but it's just better to get the series of punches in. Because, again, walk patterns aren't very fast. You can sometimes knock them off real quickly, but it's not a guarantee. And you have to go for, like, some risky strats to make that happen. It's all at that risk of just, like, getting stun locked. A um, couple things that are out of your control are the spawn patterns. They can just sometimes surround you naturally, and there's nothing you can do about it. So, you have to improvise on the fly a lot throughout all of Jackie Chan adventures, which would make it a cool sort of thing to showcase at a marathon like um, Awesome Games Done Quick. So, 
that's why I bring it up because there's a lot of improvisation you can show impressive moments where you clutch up certain fights where things are looking like they're about to go south and then you manage to uh, get everything all lined up so with each of these trains you have to hit the uh, hit that um, crowbar switch looking thing uh, and then with this one there's enough of an edge that uh, you can um, on screen where you can um, you can just uh, punch or kick the shadow men off right away and so we're done with that first like phase of this level uh, this is a particularly rough section here the isometrics make it really easy to fall off on the sides or just go too far down below we just kind of saddle ourselves like such and uh, for the most part it's a safe method it's a little slower you could jump and it's a little faster but with how high your jump can go you can sometimes just go in the way the wrong direction just based on the angle and perspective that this game provides so with this particular set of enemies we're actually just going to purposely run them up to the bar um, and that will allow us to get through our punches just slightly faster than a normal fight so uh, shadow gold dudes okay we disarmed both of them very quickly and then uh, we try not to roll too much but I was uh, tr doing my best to manipulate the enemy patterns in a way that I would just I could quickly um, throw them into the abyss once again um, maybe they can become railroad workers who knows But again, as we uh, proceed into these last few uh, sections of the game, we want to just knock them away as much as possible, especially because we want as much health as we can. Okay, so one thing I learned mid-spot here, actually, and I'm going to incorporate it into later runs, pick up a rock, throw it at all four of them. It might not get all four of them, but it allows you to jump down and have a pretty quick uh, section of fights there, too. Then we're going to just purposely go for the healing item because we're coming up on some shadow men right here, I think. Yeah, yes we are. Kick the switch and then send them packing if we don't get hit by the shurikens or shadow stars, whatever they are. This particular um, section of, uh, of the game is one where he would want to have all three lives or even more if at all possible. You can sometimes collect up an extra one depending on how well you handle the stage. I think it's either whether you get a high score or if you play through the fight near flawlessly. I'm not sure exactly what the um, ramifications of it are required. I think I'll have to look back on like some of the playthrough guides because I know some about this game, but there's a little bit that I've forgotten about. You know, played it as a kid a lot, and it's pretty well-versed in it at the time. So we can actually just fly by that train area by, by just going through the bottom and now we're getting through what i consider to be the worst part of the game um you'll get um tons and tons of enemies show up all at once uh stun lock is a normal thing that happens here we the dream would be just to get through all these fights without getting caught in a single stun lock and if we do it i think it'd be possible in every category for the speed run to be brought below like the sub hour it could even be possible that we could get runs like as low as 58 minutes perhaps i mean based on my current knowledge of this game um it'll really depend on enemy uh, cooperation and just how well i play myself because miss inputs are normal speedrunners are prone to error it's something that happens very regularly and actually, because of how much can go wrong in a run like Jack and Chan Adventures, the, the goal is pretty much going to be uh, uh, try to get it done with a good showing. I'd say the estimate, a good time estimate for this particular game would be, um, oh boy, this is where the worst part begins. So I tried to roll out so I could catch all four of them to go a little faster. I was kind of able to do that, but these... Um, particular shadow dudes were being very uncooperative there's a couple of ways you could either just knock them against the wall very quickly then you don't have to worry about them i just went for the safest method which was the kicking method and then i went for the uh i went for the switch right away again 
if the golden shadow dude just like walks right around you it can be game over and it almost was for me in this particular uh game uh, very fortunately i got lucky and i uh i didn't get absolutely bopped um but i got close i got very darn close with this last set Um, they they were also one thing that can happen is you can just accidentally pause I, I do it every now and then fortunately got done with one life but that's not gonna be enough for Alcatraz so we had to just uh, reset ourselves with a fresh slate of three and that is very purposefully so for because the, there's one section of Alcatraz and then there's another section so we're just gonna let these guys purposely stun lock us Usually they're a bit quicker about it, but in this case, uh, unlike being able to uh, jump off the side, we do not have that option. So, um, we'd prefer that we only have like maybe one bar of health remaining when we enter this stage, but that's not always an option. So, unlike jumping off, which uh, for the f uh, f strategic continue, which only cost us about, let's say, Oh. Um, it usually, um, using a force continue at Alcatraz, I'd say it cost us around 20 seconds, whereas in most regular levels, it's only about five. So we try not to get caught ourselves, get ourselves caught in a terrible situation like that, but it's not a guarantee. It's not at all a guarantee. Because from here on forward, really what we're trying to do is um, be able to sustain our life and vitality as much as possible, especially because in this particular stage, uh, the final boss that we roll up on after completing the first level, completing the level boss, of course, um... Uh, has a, uh has a particularly rough fight uh, known as Shenbu, which I'll discuss a little bit later. So actually, uh, with these particular enemy fights, I haven't had them fully optimized yet. Uh, I think a good way that more time could potentially be saved is to just round them up at the sides of these walls here. It might take longer, but then you don't lose as much vitality and you can play the last boss fight a little bit riskier. So it might be worth my interest to grind this out a little more. Only problem is you have to just get through an entire playthrough and then save at Alcatraz. So it's almost better to just complete the speedrun and then not save before the Shenbu fight. So much like Alca much like some of the previous uh, levels, we have our um, Bug Eyes gang members, uh, uh, gang dudes uh, coming in for some punches. And uh, there's no real good way of handling this. You just kind of have to just uh, punch back and forth and hope for the best. So that's our first row of uh, gang dudes. This is a rough section in particular. So sometimes we just go up here for a moment to think, let the enemies just sort of uh, run about. And then I got lucky here. I was able to round them up into four for the first few phases of punches because then we can get rid of a few of them. And like that so yeah I this run demonstrated how quickly I was able to disarm them with ease for the most part aside from a few troublesome uh, stun locks which are you know standard fare for a game like this playing perfect can be really difficult so we try to play near perfect um, I guess which goes without saying you know the the, the ethos of speedrunning I purposely uh, jump here so I can get some extra healing items. So I didn't line myself up very nicely and I, I totally wasted one health bar right away. We got the big dudes with attitude. They will um, show up for our last few times in this game. Um, and then we got some more shadow dudes. Now in particular, this section here, if I can round them up perfectly, we could just like punch them up against the uh, com computer desk or book desk. It's the early 2000s, it could be either. You know, Alcatraz doesn't really have computer, like, uh, outlets, so it's probably just a book desk. An office desk is probably the better term. 
I was thinking about that really carefully for some reason. Uh, while I was totally forgetting to acknowledge again uh, throughout this entirety of this level, Alcatraz is slightly easier overall than Siberia, but I only say that once you have like the full knowledge of the game. Uh, that is knowing how to round up your enemies, probably. Uh, knowing how to um, efficiently round up your enemies um, without any trouble. As you can see, like if you just let any one of them address your vulnerabilities from behind, you can get caught in a bad place. Fortunately for me, I was able to get away with that. Doesn't always happen that way. So, in the case of uh, this game, we purposely try to go for the switches right away, and we're gonna just walk up to there like this, uh, grab this, uh, go up here, jump down here, like so, and then we got this big dude to uh, purposefully, I don't know what it is, but every time all the big dudes just will walk off the ledge for some reason. Uh, they, they do it every single time. I don't know why. So we were actually lined up purposely where purposely where we could get very quick punches every single time. And this was not a bad section. It was not perfect, but it was certainly pretty good for what it was worth. This is the final like difficult Shadow Man section. And then we can just avoid them for the most part. We can ignore them. Sometimes there'll be a nuisance in the final boss fight, but for the most part, they kind of just kind of just screw around, try to cause you trouble every now and then, but this particular section here, you, you gotta be on your toes. Especially with these guys. Like, after you get past this section, you're mostly just breathing a sigh of relief, because the worst is mostly over. I say mostly, because you, you, can, you can have some misfortune. Uh, that you just run right into in this uh, this uh, re boss revisit for Alcatraz. So I actually got out pretty nicely with a strategic uh, backflip or roll. Depends on which way you want to go about it. So here's our uh, final uh, regular boss revisit. So I'm going to have to purposefully re-roll here. So again, stun lock. Key thing here get in the stun lock and we stun lock this particular boss with kicks and then the first boss from San Francisco with punches. So we're actually purposely uh, kicking so that the baddies are approaching us every time and then we can just stun lock like such. Sometimes the enemies can help us maintain the stun lock otherwise other times they'll uh, just stop it. That was a great that was a great fight right there. I think my nod acknowledged that. And we're getting to the final boss. Uh, final boss is Shenbu. And Shenbu is a, a bit of a bit of a tough fight to complete. So one thing that I recently discovered and actually discovered in this run, that a lot of the ways I'll get through a run, you will just take a lot of damage from Shenbu. Uh, he uh, likes to headbutt you. As you can see, I just died. So I... There's a certain isometrics that is required to uh, to um, complete this boss. Uh, one way we can forego that is by uh, lining ourselves up from the other side, from the right side. And actually, we can set ourselves from a perfect distance where we don't take nearly as much damage. And we can also, well, mostly avoid these uh, roll ones. Uh, it's not perfect. Sometimes they'll just set themselves up as such and we just die and... As you can see, that's why we want all three lives. So I'm thinking I must have purposely rolled myself. Oh, that's why. I was trying to find another healing item because I was afraid I was going to lose this run originally. So the run's pretty much complete. I uh, just have to... Uh, just to, felt safe. There we go. Now that, that's the healing item. And then I must have purposefully just decided screw it, I'm going this way. See, that's a, like a pretty perfect range. 
it's actually a pretty safe method and uh, with that the uh, the meat and potatoes of this game is complete and that is Jackie Chan Adventures hard mode I will only be doing commentary for this particular one because it's it looks pretty much the same for the other difficulties and then we just spam through the text and time I set is when the screen goes black and uh, yeah that's Jackie Chan Adventures Really fun run. I think it would be a cool one to showcase at GDQ. We haven't had the chance to show it off before, so I think it would be a great one to showcase. Um, that's at least what I personally think. Um, so, once again, you know, for the consideration of the panel for Awesome Games Done Quick 2023, I hope you will all consider Jackie Chan Adventures for the Game Boy Advance. I think it's a fun run and it deserves a showing at this event. Thank you.